try to go point wise point wise to individual object something like that point mass concept if a very continuous body then you try to come up what is the point mass representation of a continuous body what is the point mass representation center of gravity or center of mass later you will see that center of gravity and center, center of mass both happens to be two different things so all those those kinds so all those are giving a coordinate of uh, point mass related to sir point mass concept so here point is so why that means you thinks uh, object in a discrete fashion so that's where point mass concept are coming there okay so uh, recap of uh, a random variable so we had already discussed all these that uh, if you toss a coin three times then what is the sample of space you are getting it here and uh, the correspondingly if you are willing to quantify those outcomes so these these are the outcome you observe these are the outcome you observe okay uh, you can denote it all these omega omega 1 omega 2 up to omega n and these are mapped to numbers and those we are calling it random numbers so this uh, we had already seen okay and another example you can if you toss a uh, five coin of, um, together or a coin five times so again uh, what kind of outcome would be there five tuple are you getting tuple meaning of tuple so order pair if two things are the two tuple is order pair that uh, you have already seen in Cartesian coordinate and if you go for more than uh, two tuple then it would be n tuple so five tuple is coming here so here single outcome it is of the type of five five tuple omega a single omega is of five tuple So here, here, how many uh, way you can define uh, uh, random variable? So you, you can define number of heads in a sequence of or sequence of or five tuple uh, or sequence or five tuple, finite sequence of length five or five tuple. Uh, here, if I'm asking, compute the probability of uh, it is what uh, one five tuple of heads and tails, one five tuple of heads and tails. How you will visualize? it is uh, if you are taking uh, the number of heads and tail so it is talking about a random variable it is a map from so what are the value the random variable x is taking here what are the value random variable x is taking one thing that uh, you people uh, didn't ask that why i am saying that uh, x is taking value you may raise a question x is a function then why x will take a value are you compatible with that approach or not if i am saying x is a function and again i am saying that x is taking value do you see those two statements same not no so you had already seen the structure of sequence have you seen sequence or not have you seen what are the sequence sequence is a function from where to what is the domain of sequence what is the domain of sequence? Sequence you have already seen, uh, arithmetic sequence, geometric sequence, and harmonic sequence. This kind of sequence you have, in the high school you might have already seen. So what is sequence? It is a map from set of natural number to where? What is the codomain of sequence? Have you seen sequence or not? It is a map from set of natural number to R, real number. And you write <coughs> if f is a map then you come to write f of n why an element of natural number we denoted by a small n okay and we say it suppose a sequence you are taking it f of n equal to 1 by n <coughs> what kind of sequence this one <coughs> It is a harmonic sequence. Have you seen 1 by n kind of sequence? So 1 by n. n is belong, where is n? n is in the domain of sequence. That one is natural number. 
or where is n by 1 by n? It is in R. It belongs to R in the codomain. Okay. N belongs to so have but we are not giving this kind of notation to a sequence. What notation we are giving? What notation we are giving? We are saying that Fn we are denoting it by generally An kind of thing. Have you An have you have you seen this notation An equal to 1 by N. So, a sequence either we denote it by this uh, angle bracket or uh, a small bracket or curly bracket. This notation you might have already seen, no? curly bracket you might have already seen. Whenever someone is saying that curly bracket, that means you are putting and you are saying sequence, there is order, sequence always contains order. Okay. So, this various notation of sequence you might have already seen that. Or you, uh, what, what is An? An is a? An is what? It is a sequ you are saying it is a sequence or nth term of sequence. You are saying nth term of sequence. And uh, if uh, it is nth term of sequence, then what is this one? An is a real number. It is a term of sequence. You are saying that it is a term of sequence. That means value of sequence. What you are saying that? You are saying it is value of sequence. So, if you try to see uh, function approach in the Venn diagram, you call it sequence is having first term. Now, first member of the natural number is 1, uh, 2, 3 and it will go like that. Okay. And then it is mapped to real number. A 1 is mapped to A1, A1 is a real number, 2 is mapped to A2, 3 is mapped to A3, <coughs> likewise N is mapped to An. n is mapped likewise it is going uh, okay so simply here what you say that for simplification of notation in place of f we say that a a is a map from n to r such that an is a uh, natural number uh, sorry an is a real number it is, it is a real number. It is a real number. And the for of sake of simplicity, A we have taken it and the sequence we denote it by <coughs> term of the sequence. Loosely you can say that F equal to An. You can say that the A equal to An simply. So, this one is sequence. <coughs> Are you getting meaning of this or not? So, a sequence can be represented by its term of the sequence generally for the sake of simplicity. Likewise, x is a random variable. So, we can represent x by the corresponding random number that x is mapped to. Are you getting meaning of this? So, same here. We are saying that x is observing this variable. We are saying it is coming similarly from uh, sim in similar pattern what sequence we have already seen. Sequence we write in term of term. So, an is a term. An is not a uh, function. An is a term. Nth term. We are calling it nth term. So, sequence we try to denote it by an. So, loosely you can say that uh, this is a sequence. That means equivalently it is denoting a function from set of natural number to A, set of natural number to A, it is denoting a function. So, that uh, 
just all these are classical notation what we have already proceeded with. So, same thing we are saying it here uh, x c j uh, map from sample space to uh, r and hence x is a what x is a random variable and x is observing value what value x will observe here what value x will observe x will observe value from omega x what are those value number of heads so in the five tuple what would be number of heads 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 as up to 5 so here it say that this equivalently you can say that x is observing value from the set zero, one, two, and it will go up to five, three, four, five. It will go up to five. So, this so that is why we say that x is observing this value. What are these value? That is why in the table I had wrote, uh, mentioned that in the first row we observe value of x. That means those are random number. x is mapping to random number and we simply say that, they say that x is observing those random number simply. If these are random number then what are the probability of observation, observation of those that we compute it by going back to sample space through inverse map. Okay. So, all these for exercise you can denote all. So, one five tuple would be of how many one five tuple would be there? Five tuple of how many five tuple would be it? Two to the power? Two to the power five it would be? How many element it will have? Two to the power five. So, you can uh, features all these. Okay. And uh, like in the experiment of two dice uh, uh, you can talk, define various kind of uh, things like uh, sum of two rolls. What would be sum of two rolls? What are the possible value of sum? If you are uh, uh, sum of two rolls, if you are uh, uh, rolling two dice together, what are the value of uh, sum of two rolls? It would be 2 to 12. So, you can uh, design those things. So, that would be also one kind of random variable. Some, if you come up with some kind of things. If you talk number of six in the two roll, whether it is a legitimate uh, uh, random variable, it is a random variable number of if you are uh, getting 1 1 how many 6 you observe there 0 if you are getting 2 2 0 so all those uh, those which are not having 6 will map to 0 and uh, 6 uh, uh, then uh, where 6 observe single 6 it will map to 1 and where double 6 observe it will map to 2 so 3 possible value x is observing there 0 1 2 so, here in a single experiment of rolling two dice together, how many random variable you can define? Various random variable. So, various possible. So, here if you are taking a random experiment where sample space is finite, then you can just define finite number of random variable, not infinite kind of things, finite number of random variable. So, there are various possible uh, random variable you can define it in a single random experiment. And always remember that when you are defining random experiment, always remember that the domain of a random experiment always happens to be omega. If you come up with a definition and that is not consuming and uh, that is not uh, able to map uh, uh, one of the element of omega, then that would be no more a random variable that would be not a function even itself. So, it can't be a random variable that situation will also come there. So, various examples of random variable we are seeing here. So, a uh, few more examples like that uh, if you are uh, coming with uh, uh, suppose you are selecting numbers at random from interval minus 1 to 1 there you can design random variable like sign kind of things. So, sign function you might have already heard sign function or signum function signal so sign function so omega so if you are choosing number at random from minus in interval minus 1 to 1 then uh, there would be three kind of uh, numbers trichotomy principle we call it what negative number positive number and zero so that's where three value it is taking here see, remember that the sample space is a continuous set Sample space is omega is what? 
minus 1 to 1, but what is omega x? Here omega is, what is omega? It is close interval minus 1 to 1, but what is omega x? Range of uh, x, it is uh, not r, it is uh, that r is codomain, uh, omega x is the value x is observing, what are the value x is observing? Sine function, uh, signum function, it is observing minus 1, 0, 1, so 3 value, omega x is containing 3 value. Range of x is here, uh, just observing 3 value, omega x, you will call it. And definitely omega x is a subset of real number. What are those? Minus 1, 0 and 1. So, you have to see all these. So, I am right now talking about only uh, example of random variable. Another random variable, random variable you, you can come up with that uh, uh, in a what uh, binary fashion like that uh, positive and uh, non positive. What we call this number? L omega is less than equal to 0. What we call it? It is not positive. We will not say it is negative. Why? Equality is also there. So, we will say it is uh, not positive. Okay, that means generally set of positive and negative real number we denote it by r minus r also it is including 0. So, we will put here union sign and including 0 and this one is positive number. So, a positive number you can simply denote it by r plus r plus. Okay. So, tell me what is here omega? What is the sample space? What is the sample space? What is the sample space? R. R. We are selecting number at random and there we are defining number in positive and non-negative, non-positive category. So, here sample space is R and what is range of the random variable? 0, 1. I would like to highlight classification of random variable. It is of two types. One is discrete, another one is con continuous. So, here the classification of random variable is not relying on the con uh, continuous or discrete nature of sample space. It is relying on continuous and discrete nature of range of the sample space. So, that I, I would like to highlight here. Here you observe the, that what is sample space this it is a continuous set and what is the range of uh, this uh, random variable it is a discrete set it is a finite set a discrete set likewise also you can observe that range of this uh, this one is a finite set and hence a countable set and uh, uh, and hence a discrete set and what is omega it is a continuous set so when we will classify random variables, it will be based on range of the random variable, not based on the domain of the random variable. Are you getting meaning of this or not? So, that approach is, is very essential to understand. Likewise, uh, uh, here uh, another function, have you heard a uh, characteristic function anywhere? Have you heard characteristic function of a set? It is saying that uh, uh, giving weight to element. If you are taking an element from set, then give a weight 1. If you are taking an element which is not in the set, give weight 0. That one is having 0 weight. That means what does it mean? Something is coming outside will not get degree from triple IT Dharwa. But who are registered there in triple IT Dharwa? they will get degree from here. Okay. That means they are getting weight 1 and outside people are not getting 1, they are getting 0. So, characterizing, it is characterizing that 
things under consideration. So, that function we are calling it characterization function, another name also you can call it indicator function also. Indicate, you try to indicate it. So, later this example will come along. So, this one, this chi is the notation, this notation we call it chi, Greek letter chi, chi notation. So, chi is an, again it is a random variable and here what is the domain? What is the domain? It is any omega. Here remember that in the first example what is domain? Close interval minus 1 to 1, very a specific set, subset of real number. In the second example, what is domain or what is sample space R, very a specific set. In the third, it can be any kind of sample space. We are not putting any a specification there, it is can be, so we are just freeing it. So, here omega is just omega, any kind of omega and what is uh, omega x? What is omega x here? 0, 0, 1. So, third one is actually very general in sense that we call it indicator function or characteristics function, there are various names and we will see a lot uh, here in this course, application of these things. Okay. So, th these are the various example of uh, uh, discrete random variables, all why discrete, all the omega x are discrete set, where this one is a discrete set, it is a discrete set, in short I will write d dot s, this one is also a discrete, uh, this one is also a discrete set, all these are discrete set discrete set what you observe. Okay. So, here a discrete random variable is based on discrete nature of range of random variable. So, we are trying to define discrete random variable in a very detailed way, how it is defined. So, a discrete random variable, it is a map from uh, omega x, uh, omega to omega x where omega x generally we put in the form of sequence. <coughs> omega x is a countable set, here omega x is what? It is a countable set or discrete set, we call it omega x is a discrete set. If you are saying it is a discrete set, then what you do? You can always come up with a sequence notation. So, we are putting in term of sequence, we are putting in term of sequence, single sequence, but omega we cannot put in a single sequence form. Are you getting meaning of this or not? I have written in term of like that, but it simply cannot, uh, generally it is not always possible omega in term of a, a single sequence, but omega x in case of discrete random variable, omega x must be a discrete set and hence omega x must be written in a single sequence form. That is meaning of a discrete random variable. And apart from that, if you are writing in like that way, so if you are taking any subset of omega that will pulls back that will pull back x inverse inverse image of b, b is a subset of omega x and that will pulls back to an event in omega. What is meaning of uh, uh, this we say that x inverse of b belongs to sigma omega means x inverse b is an event in omega, it is an event that means uh, x inverse b is a subset of omega and satisfying a statement satisfying a statement, only that thing you have to know, okay, that not is it. And we will see clear picture of this one, how does it look like, how does it look like, we will talk about that. And here we have to recall uh, a structure of uh, here uh, omega x. So, if you talk about omega x, uh, omega x is a sequence, sequence of real numbers, then what is meaning of uh, uh, b equal to, so we are writing uh, here omega x, we, we are writing in term of a single sequence, we are writing this one in term of a single sequence. So, if you are taking any b, <coughs> that, then what will be that b? b will, can, will be sub sequence of, if b is a subset of omega x, then what would be b? and omega x is a sequence of numbers, then what would it be? 
what would we be? B would be also a sequence. Are you getting meaning of this or not? So B would be a sequence, but it would be not full sequence omega x. It would be a subsequence. It will contain some terms of omega x, some sequence. So for sake of simplicity, we are supposing that here B is containing a single term of the sequence. Call it x. Call it x. What does it mean? B x belongs to B. B is containing a single sequence, a single term of the sequence. Then what would be x inverse of B? That means x inverse of x. It would be uh, collection of all those omega which are mapped to x. Are you getting meaning of this or not? So it is picture it, it is coming like this way here. Here you are having omegas, various omegas here. And in omega x you come up with the sequencing term x1, x2, Okay, it will go like that, the various terms are there. So if you talk about uh, x1, just yeah, if you talk about x2, what are the inverse image of x2? You have to find it here. Inverse image of x2, it would be uh, like this set. This set and denote it by this set x inverse of x2. x2, you call it b. So it, it is collection of all omega which map to x2. Suppose x2 equal to x, so it is like th that inverse image of x is, it is collection of all omega from sample space which map to x. And thus loose notation, simple notation of this we denote it by x, x, x equal to, uh, we read it, x is observing, here you have to introduce the concept that x is observing the value a small x. So here remember that the capital X is a what? Capital X is a function or a, it is a random variable. Cap, capital X is a random variable. Okay. And what is it is a variable and what is in the right hand side you observe a small x. That means a small x is what? A particular value. It is a particular value that you have observed under the map x under the map x. So here x is what? It is a random variable. You will say that it is a random variable and, and what is a small x? You call it observe value of x or under x. Under random variable x, you will read it a small x, it is observe value. That means a small x is not changing. Are you getting meaning? If you are tossing coin, two coins together, if you observe two, what does it mean? That means you observe an outcome where two heads are coming. So two, x equal to two is that you have already observed. So that is the two is the observed value. But when you are tossing two coins together, how many values that x will observe? 0, 1, 2. 0, 1, 2. Okay. So here, when you are saying x equal to 2, that means you have already observed an outcome where you counting number of heads. That one is equal to 2. That means you have already observed. So that's where uh, that, that two given value of x, random variable x, that we say that it is, it has already observed. So this a small x. So this a small x we call it observed value. Observe. Okay, observe value. O B S. Yes, uh, in short, I am writing it. You can uh, in notebook you can write it in full form. Observe value. It is not variable. It is observe value. Observe value. Okay. So that I, I would like to say that. Now, again, I am saying that the range of omega x we are putting in the term of sequence. So it is at most countable or countable, simply you can say that. So if you are defining a discrete random variable, what is discrete random variable? It is a map from omega to omega x such that 
omega x is a discrete random variable and and every subset in the Borel picture kind of thing simply you can say that every subset B kind of things from omega s which is pulls back to Borel set B is notation for Borel set pulls back to a uh, event in the omega pulls back it just continue the definition of random variable it is not losing uh, just recall the definition of random variable and you have to uh, follow the definition that definition only difference is coming here uh, in the pattern of B what is changing here and in the pattern of omega x in the definition of random variable we had taken very general omega x here we are taking omega, omega x must be a discrete state that means it is a sequence of numbers sequence of number we are putting in term of sequence of numbers and b happens to be singleton set containing values and which pulls back to an event and we denote it by this nature so uh, in geometry you can see it like this uh, you are getting picture like uh, various element in the omega and these omegas are mapped to uh, map to real numbers so this mapping you can see it like this way this is the uh, uh, mapping uh, visualizer visualization of discrete random variable now once you are having a discrete random variable then how we define what we will call probability distribution of the discrete random variable the probability distribution of discrete random variable we call it probability mass function why mass we observe in the uh, uh, omega x what we observe we observe points in the real line why because omega x is now is, it is a sequence of real numbers real numbers are coming in the sequence of real numbers so we can say that first number second number third number and fourth uh, members like that you can say that so you are getting a proper sequencing so these uh, omega x is a sequence of points so you are getting points in the real line you are getting so when you are saying like that then you are uh, talking about point point and each point is having a probability you can compute this probability so it is a uh, what is uh, mass probability mass that point point is we are not counting point here probability mass so each point is having uh, actually probability mass so probability mass function it is a probability mass function like here uh, we are interested in probability we are not interested in uh, that weight of the body here what we are interested in we are interested in probability so that's why we are calling it probability mass so here the probability distribu distribution function it becomes a probability mass function and how probability mass function is defined so it is defined in the same way what we had already seen the random variable so it is a uh, composition of these two uh, probability capital p is the probability major x inverse uh, that one is inverse image of x it is coming like x v a small x is one observed value and just do composition here that means p of x inverse of x and x inverse of x is what uh, all those omega which are mapped to x which are mapped to x so p of uh, probability of all those omega which are mapped to x and sort this we can denote it like p of x is observing a value small x this one is the short not notation this is the short notation now if you here you had seen the probability distribution of a discrete random variable it is defined as now uh, a small p of x equal to capital p of x is observing a value a small x i am reading it x is a observing a value a small x don't say x equal to x what does it mean if you are someone is saying x equal to x means identity kind of thing is coming there so in left hand side you observe capital x that in, that one is a random variable as a function and a right hand side you observe a small x so you read it x is observing a value a small x that we are saying it okay and now if you are uh, you have already expressed probability distribution of a discrete random variable in term of probability measure of x is observing value a small x then it is satisfying three properties why why first property is coming in the definition of probability measure you had already seen that what value probability measure is taking it is taking value between 0 and 1 probability measure is always taking value between 0 and 1 so by default a first property is coming what is second property you had already seen that 
if you uh, sum all the probabilities, normalizing probability, what is the probability of sample space? One. Then what is the probability of omega x? What is the probability of omega x? If probability of omega is one, what is the probability of omega x? That would be also one. Why? Those are random numbers of those are random number that x has map omega to random number. That those random number which are having inverse images in omega. In the example, uh, one example in causing, uh, tossing three coin, what probability distribution you had already seen that? If you recall, so what number you had seen? Uh, 0 in tossing three coin, 1, 2, 3, what was the probability? X is observing this and what, 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 what was the probability of observing 0? What was the probability? If you are tossing uh, a coin 3 times, what is the probability of observing 0? X is number of heads. X is number of heads you are counting. What was the probability of observing 0? 1 by 8. 1 by and what is the probability of observing to 1? How many times you observe 1? 3. So, what is the probability of observing 1? 3 by 8. What is the probability of observing 2 by 2? 3 by 8. Probability of observing 3? 1 by 8. What was the corresponding event? It was H, H, H. Okay. So, only one time. Okay. Out of at out of. What is the sum of these probabilities? 1. So, that uh, it is saying. The second one is saying. So, here 0, 1, 2, 3. All these are what? Mem value of omega x. These are coming in omega x. So, if you summing the probability of all those value of omega x, then what would be sum of the probabilities? Sum of probability of random numbers, simply random number, call in omega x contains a random number. What is the sum of probability of omega x? It would be equal to 1. Sum of the probability of all the random numbers, it would be equal to 1. So, it is just normalizing probability we say that. And the third property is just talking about computation of probability of an event. So, if you are defining probability mass function, probability distribution of a discrete random variable, we call it probability mass function. Why? We observe point mass structure, point thing. So, each point is having probability. So, that is why we say that uh, uh, probability mass function. And uh, that one is satisfying three properties. First, probability mass function is between 0 and 1. Second is sum of the all probability mass function, it is equal to 1, that we call it normalizing property. And uh, third one is just it is the way of computing probability mass function of q value of x. It is not like B may be, uh, it may take one value, two value, three value, like depends upon what B is there. It would be given to you. It is way of computing probability of an event. Okay. So, all about this one is discrete pro, uh, random variable and probability mass function. Any question here? Okay. Now, we will define, we will see various kind of events there in a uh, discrete random variable and how we will compute probability mass function though, those things. So, for each possible value x, is possible value x that x is observing, okay. That means x is observing value from where to where. x is a map from, once I say that it is a discrete random variable, then by default omega x, you can put it in term of sequence. So, it is a sequence. Omega x is a subset of real number and it is a sequence. you can put in term of sequence. Okay. So, each uh, uh, collect all possible outcome which are mapped to x. That means, collect when I am saying outcome, what is notation of outcome? Everywhere I have taken omega. X is we are saying observe value of the random variable x. 
a small x is observed value error. See the no notation omega uh, a small m omega we denote it that we say that outcome of a random experiment and all possible outcome we call it sample space collection of all possible. That, so, okay. so, you collect all possible outcome that has been mapped to the observed value of small x. This we say that observed value of small x. Then what you do? Then in order to compute the probability of observing the value of small x, how you will compute it? Sum the probability of all those outcome which are mapped to small x. Are you getting meaning of this or not? So again picture, okay, uh, all these. So again I am uh, several times I am saying same thing here. So this one is, it is coming. So P of x is what? It is actually probability of, so here, here one another example I have taken it. Suppose you are taking the event B containing two observed value. What are two observed value? Uh, x2 and x5. Like you are putting the x2 is second term of the omega x, x5 is the fifth term of the omega x. Okay. So, if I am asking to compute probability of B, how you will compute probability of B? Then you have to find the all outcome which are either mapped to x2 or mapped to x5. Are you getting meaning of this or not? x2 or x5. Okay. Is it possible that a omega can be mapped to x2 and x5? Is it possible? Is it possible or not? Say yes or no. Is it possible that a omega can be mapped to x2 and x5 both? It is not possible because it will break the rule of everyness. Oh, sorry, uniqueness. It will be break the rule of uh, uniqueness. Okay, it will break the rule of uniqueness of a function. So it is not possible. So by default, those which are mapped to x2, those omega which are mapped to x2 would be disjoint with respect to those outcome which are mapped to x5. So here we can see that we are getting here all those omega which are mapped to x2 and all those omega which are mapped to x5, x3 I have written here, I write it x5 or here do it x3, x3, okay, do it x3, okay, fine. So what would be this one? You can call uh, this set, you can denote it by a2 that means all those omega which are ma mapped to x2 that we denote it by A2 and all those omega which are mapped to x3 that we denote it by A3. So probability of computing B is equal to what? Probability of A2 union A3 and what we, are, we know from the principle of uh, definition of function A2 and A3 are mutually mutually disjoint. So, from the probability major concept, the third axioms that if A2 and A3 are mutually disjoint, what is the probability of A2 union A3? It would be sum of the probability. So, it is just sum of the probability. So, here we do, so, so probability of B, that B is containing X2 and X3. So, what is the probability of uh, X2 and X3? It is just sum of the probability, sum of the probability. See here the uh, what we see partitioning approach. That means if you try to uh, look back in pre images of each value of omega x or random numbers, then these are introducing partitioning in the sample space. Just see this pattern. It is saying that you are having a number like this x1 x1 what is the inverse image of x1 it is you call it a1 what is the inverse image of x2 you call it it is actually mapped to a2 a2 uh, likewise xn will map to so here we are getting a partitioning approach that discrete under the discrete random variable the different value of omega x different random number introduce a partition member in the omega x so it is another way of visualizing partition whenever you say that we are having a discrete random variable we are getting a partitioning a partitioning of the sample space it is partitioning 
so probability of here a1 and a2 are mutually disjoint that's way if you are willing to compute uh, uh, x probability of x1 and x2 together if it is coming in a set just you have to sum the probabilities probability of x1 plus probability of x2 just you have to sum why the corresponding pre images are mutually disjoint mutually disjoint so that concept is coming is it clear to everyone so all these are event concept this uh, we are trying to see event in different perspective so another thing is that if you are defining a uh, discrete random variable then there are two possibilities one that x may be one one function or it may be many one function if x is one one function what is probability mass function of x it is just uh, that uh, probability that uh, all those omega which are mapped to x so it is one one it is one one single omega is coming here here single omega is coming one one omega is mapped to x single one one corresponding okay another situation is coming here uh, many one function x is many one okay so if many one situation is there then if uh, you are taking a x a small x from omega x then there would be more than one pre image of x more than one element of omega will be mapped to x pre image so how you will compute the probability of x this also i am saying that value probability of x or you can say that pro value of probability mass function at x that observed value so how you will compute you have to look back all those pre image which are mapped to x what are those those may be k in number it would be k is what greater than 1 because why it is a many one function many one many point has been mapped to one many one function so in that case if you are willing to compute probability of mass function at point x it is just sum up probability of all those pre images all those pre images or outcome in the pre image all those outcomes so you have to sum up all these so we in the many one situation you are getting it like this way okay any question here i think all these are part of calculus it looks like that so now so in either in one one situation or many one situation in either case we can summarize probability that the value of discrete random variable is observing or take uh, on by defining a probability mass function p of x a small p of x I just forget about all this i come to this this so when you are defining a discrete random variable then you are coming with a probability distribution as a probability mass function how it is defined as now it is probability mass function is a function we denote it by a small letter function everywhere you might have already seen generally in a small letter so in the case of probability mass function how probability mass function is defined a small p suffix x of uh, a small x it is the argument how it is defined as it is equal to what probability that x is observing value a small x just you have to confine up to this definition only okay now on what you have to confine when you are someone is saying that you are having a discrete random variable and you have to compute probability mass function of that discrete random variable how you will define it is defined as uh, capital p that x is observing value a small x x is observing value a small x this is the working definition of probability mass function are you getting meaning of this or not i have written various things i am not leaving a single thing so that you, uh, anywhere you will have con mis confusion something like that okay misconception or con uh, confusion like that i have written but now onward the working definition will be this only this no no when there would be a random variable and someone is asking compute the probability mass function of that random variable how you will compute how you will compute probability that x is observing that value probability that x is observing a value a small x so that in this way you have to compute this is the probability mass function definition of probability mass function and when probability mass function is coming when your discrete random variable you, when your random variable is discrete when your random variable is discrete that means when omega x is a discrete set then you are talking about that so i will take various example uh, here just uh, tossing a coin four times 
times take a coin and toss it four times what is the sample of space you got it like this way okay then define a random variable x number of heads in the four tosses okay so what are the possible value x you will observe 0 1 2 3 4 okay then if you are willing to compute probability mass function how you will compute probability mass function you have to compute probability mass function at 0 what first value is 0 because uh, we come up with a sequence so there is a when whenever you say sequence there is a proper ordering so first value you can say that first value second value third value fourth value like okay so what is the value of probability mass function at 0 that means it is defined as probability major such that x is observing value 0 x is observing value 0 if you are saying x is observing value 0 what is the pre major of 0 tell t t t 40 that is mapped to 0 there is no head so that's what is the probability of t t t it is how many entries uh, outcome are there in omega 16 2 to the power 4 16 so probability of uh, t t t t it is 1 by 16 so what is the value of probability mass function at 0 we have computed indirectly and it is coming as 1 by 16 likewise what is the probability uh, value of probability mass function at 1 we will compute it by the definition of the probability measure that x is observing value 1 okay and if you x is observing value 1 means one head how many times you observe one head four times four choose one so that simply and each each outcome is having probability 1 by 16 so 4 by 16 so this is the probability of observing one one head that value of probability mass function at one this we will read the value of probability mass function at one likewise what is the value of probability mass function at two what is the value of probability mass function at two that means it is defined by we say that it is defined by probability measure that x is observing value 2 when you say that when it is saying that uh, you are observing two heads so out of four what is the count of two observing two head four choose two four choose two so four choose two and each outcome is having probability 1 by 16 so that's where uh, four choose two is what six so what is the probability of observing two it is six by 16 likewise uh, what is the uh, value of probability mass function at 3 that means you will compute it it is a competition process so working definition i am saying working definition of probability mass function that probability measure that x is observing value 3 that means 4 choose 3 and each outcome is having probability 1 by 16 so 4 choose 3 is 4 and that's where desired probability of uh, value of probability mass function at 3 is 4 by 16 uh, likewise what is the uh, uh, value of uh, probability mass function at 3 that means probability that x is observing value 4 how, how many outcomes are there in the pre major of x equal to 4 just one outcome head 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 all head okay so what is the probability of observing that outcome 1 by 16 so probability of probability mass value of probability mass function at 3 is equal to sorry 4 4 okay correct it, it is 4 it is 1 by 16 that you got it okay so this is the way to compute probability mass function of a discrete random variable this one is one example and we will see various specific examples of probability mass function any question here till now any question one question i am seeing that if you come up with this definition can we give a single form of this probability mass function because here probability distribution you come up with probability distribution different different values it is taking can we get a like if i am saying that f of x equal to x square it is a function so it is having uh, it is not like we say that 0 map to 0 1 map to 1 2 map to 4 3 map to 9 it is not like that now those are images now image and uh, that uh, pre image relation that we say that uh, that can. can we get that formula formula type f of x equal to x square kind of thing that we call it unique representation that explicit formula explicit formula of the protein mass function that a specification we will go for various of uh, various of uh, discrete random variable we will go to that this one is also example this uh, this one is example of binomial random variable we will see it here so first the simplest random variable is coming Bernoulli random variable it is just dealing with two possible outcome 
हेड एंड टेल वॉट इज बनली रैंडम वेरिए फर्स्ट वी हैव टू डिफाइन सो ए रैंडम वेरिएबल हैज ए बनोली डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन विथ अ पैरामीटर पी दैट मीन्स ए रैंडम वेरिएबल इट इज सिंपली हैविंग आउट एन इवेंट लाइक एक्स ऑफ एक्स इवेंट इन दिस टर्म ऑफ डिस्क्रीट रैंडम वेरिएबल डी नॉट इज एक्स इज ऑब्जर्विंग वेल्यू अ स्मॉल एक्स and it is uh, here uh, it is equivalent to here omega it will map back to omega omega it would be either head or tail it would be either head or tail head, head or tail it it is ma mapping to x okay so a random variable having distribution like uh, p of x equal to uh, p is observing value a small x so it is uh, when x equal to 1 x equal to 1 that we call it success x equal to 1 that means success that means head x equal to 1 means head success generally head and x equal to 0 means failure and that means what is failure tail if you are saying getting head is a success then getting tail is a failure so that's where what is the probability of x equal to 1 probability of getting head and suppose p is the probability of getting head then what is the probability value of probability mass function at x equal to 1 it is p and what is the value of probability mass function at, at x equal to 0 it is 1 minus p and jointly we can write it like p to the power x into 1 minus p to the power 1 minus x where x is observing two value it is a bernoulli random variable that means it is taking two value one with respect to failure and one with respect to success failure you are calling it zero failure is mapped to zero and success is mapped to one that is meaning of binary binary kind of thing okay it is coming like that so the probability mass function we are writing it like this way if x equal to 0 what you will get x equal to 0 what you will get if you put in this unified explicit form of uh, form of probability mass function what you will get 1 minus p 1 minus p you will get 1 minus p. what is 1 minus p it is probability of failure probability of failure failure is mapped to zero that means it is value of probability mass function at zero if x equal to 1 what you will get what is the value of probability mass function at 1 p p is what probability of success that means that success is mapped to 1 and p is the probability of success that you see value of uh, probability uh, mass function at 1 is p that probability of success so simply it is a bernoulli distribution we call this distribution is bernoulli distribution this is a bernoulli distribution and the corresponding random variable we call it a bernoulli random variable and in short we denote it uh, this one is we read it sim the wave sign we call it sim similar similar so x is a bernoulli similar to bernoulli random variable and p is the what it is probability of success or we call it parameter of the distribution it is bernoulli p p is probability of success it would be given in question if it is not given in question what what is the p if it is not given in the question what is the p it is 0.5 always you observe that uh, you are taking unbiased point if p is not given to you then you can take 0.5 by default otherwise just mention is it is probability of success and it is given that it is a bias then it would be 0.3 0.7 0.6 something like that but it is not mentioned not given then you can by default take 0.5 okay so bernoulli distribution is used to model outcome of a bernoulli trial when you say bernoulli trial that means it is binary trial either failure or success bernoulli means binary uh, so failure success will uh, map to 1 and failure will map to 0 in numeric you have to convert in numeric now so failure will map to 0 and success will map to 1 so it is also a basic uh, building block of various classical discrete random variable you will see that most of random variable can be generated if you talk about random number generation those are actually based on uh, uniform uh, this bernoulli trials actually uniform also we will call it later so bernoulli distribution is used to model again same thing is coming so i have already given so forget about all this definition i am trying to match the actual definition of uh, what we call it uh, uh, in the random variable what we had defined probability distribution i am trying to put back in that framework okay so just uh, what you have to do here probability mass function of a bernoulli random variable it is defined as probability that x is observing value a small x and how what is that value that one is p to the power x into 1 minus p to the power 1 minus x 
where x is taking value either 0 or 1 and it is satisfying all the properties of being a property mass function. First property if you take p of x it will be between 0 and 1 it will be between, between 0 and 1. Why? It depends upon p. p may take value 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. It is not, uh, it is not clear right now. p is taking value between 0 and 1. So, by default p to, p to the power x into 1 minus p to the power 1 minus x will take value between 0 and 1. Okay, the first property is done. What about second property? Sum of the probabilities, value of probability mass function, it would be equal to 1. How many values you observe? How many values in Bernoulli random variable you observe? two value 0 and 1 what is the probability of observing 0 1 minus p what is the probability of observing 1 p so p plus 1 minus p is what 1 so it is satisfying normalizing condition fine second and third one is just it is a way of computing probability of an event just it is competition third one is the competition process not more than that so it is satisfying all the three properties of uh, probability mass function the second example I would like to take binomial distribution. When you are getting binomial distribution, when you, you are drawing, you are performing Bernoulli trial n time, Bernoulli trial n time, that means Bernoulli trial is tossing a coin, tossing, tossing coin. When you are performing Bernoulli trial n time, then you are getting binomial distribution, you are getting binomial distribution. So here, a random variable x. Here event would be what? Omega would be what here? Omega would be what? What would be outcome in when you are uh, performing Bernoulli trial n time? What would be outcome? Omega will have, it would be a sequence of n tuple. It would be when you are performing uh, n toss of a coin, then what would be a single outcome? It is a n tuple. You are getting n tuple. Are you getting one n tuple or not? That means you are getting a sequence with length n. Okay, so each omega is having that length. That means each outcome, each so each outcome is mapped to some real numbers. And what are the pre-measures of those things? Again, in term of sequence of length n, sequence of length n. Sequence will have term head and tail. You can match with uh, to, uh, tossing coin. For simplicity, you can go any other kind of. So a random variable x, which is having a binomial distribution with parameter p it is a probability of success in the Bernoulli trial okay if probability mass function is defined as probability that x is observing, observing value a small x and here uh, that means a small x is what it is number of success x you are calling it binomial now here a small x equal to a small uh, capital x equal to a small x what does it mean that you are uh, when you are performing n toss and there you are introducing a binomial random variable that means you are counting number of success or number of hits or number of ones whatever you say that so here uh, if you that means x is number of success then how many failure would be there how many failure would be there if you are taking an outcome in n trial of a Bernoulli uh, say n trial of Bernoulli uh, trial uh, n time you are performing Bernoulli trial, then you are observing x number of success. How many failure would be there in that outcome? Minus n minus x. So what is the probability of success? It p to the power x because you observe x time success. Uh, what is the probability of failure? 1 minus p to the power n minus x. And in an outcome, you observe x success and n minus x failure. How many such outcome would be there? n choose x that is a combinatorial problem n choose x so what is the probability of x success n choose x p to the power x 1 minus p to the power n minus, n minus x so this one is taking the form of what binomial coefficient so that's where this distribution we call it binomial distribution and the corresponding random variable we will call it binomial random variable okay are you getting meaning of this or not that means binomial random variable is counting what it is counting number of success in an Bernoulli trial and what is Bernoulli random variable that one is counting number of success in one Bernoulli trial that one is Bernoulli random variable 
and what is binomial random variable? Number of successes in an Bernoulli trial. Okay. Did you get meaning of this? This one is Bernoulli uh, binomial random variable. So again, you can say that there are uh, you can replace uh, here x by k. Why? Because k is most simple notation of uh, natural number. Most simple notation of natural number. So you can go for k notation and minus k notation kind of things. So again, if you talk about what is the probability mass function of binomial random variable in the uh, more ex explicit form. So forget about this part up to. Okay. So P of x, you can say that uh, value of probability mass function at x, you can say the probability that x is observed value of small x and that means it is defined as n choose x p to the power x 1 minus p to the power n minus x. This is the Bernoulli, sorry binomial distribution. This we call it, what is this one? It is a binomial distribution. Now question is coming that P is a probability of success, always it will be a probability of success in a Bernoulli trial. And what is the value of then Px? It will take value between 0 and 1. Always you can verify that there is no any issue. And if you sum all the probabilities, all the value of probability mass function, what would be this? Recall here, what term? Have you observed binomial theorem? Have you observed binomial theorem? What does it look like? Does it coming in binomial theorem? a to the power b, a plus b to the power n. Here A is what? P and what is B? 1 minus P. So this one is talking about if you summing all these coefficient, what you will get? Uh, A plus B to the power N. That means P plus 1 minus P to the power N. And what is sum? 1. 1 to the power N is 1. So that's where sum of all these probabilities equal to 1. Satisfying normalizing condition. Third one is, again it is way of computing probability of an event, okay, computation process. So there is one more thing I have already mentioned here. Now tell me if you are defining probability mass function for a binomial random variable, tell me where it will have maximum value, at which point it is having maximum value, middle. Are you very much assured that it will be in middle? It is middle when p is equal to 0.5. If p is not 0 0.5, that means uh, if, uh, coin is your not a unbiased coin. It is a biased coin, it would be not in the middle. Okay. When coin is a unbiased coin, then it would be in the middle. So that's why the formula is coming. Uh, it is a opt combinatorial optimization problem. It would be difficult. I am write, just writing. So this is the middle point. N plus P to the uh, N plus P into P. N plus 1 into P. This is the point where you will observe the maximum probability. The arg max, that's where maximum probability where you will observe N plus. If you, you can verify that. If P equal to 0.5, then it will be middle. What is meaning of 0.5? 1 by 2, no? n plus 1, how many terms are there in binomial, uh, how many uh, random numbers are there in binomial, in case of binomial random variable? It is starting from 0 to n, n plus 1. What is the middle point? n plus 1 divided by 2. Why it is coming that? Because p you have taken 0.5. That means 1 by 2. If you are not taking p 0 0.5, then it would be another point. Okay, so here graph you can see it here. If you are, if you are taking p equal to 0 0.25, it is not 0 0.5. What you observe? Is it in middle? The largest value is it in middle? It would be not in middle. You can see here. The largest value, it is not in middle. It is uh, uh, more values uh, coming towards zero side, zero side, more values are coming towards zero side. So it is askewed, we say that it is askewed. Askewed, uh, I will explain it, uh, I think uh, statistics uh, you will you will come to know all this, askewed. It is not symmetric around, it is not symmetric kind of thing, askewed. Like, askewed means uh, uh, you, you are saying that uh, tailness, you call it tailness, tail, 
you observe tail so where you observe tail which side you observe tail which side you observe tail hmm. tail are you getting meaning of tail or not suppose one animal is having very long tail what will happen what will happen tail is always trying to touch the earth ground okay so it is touching then what situation it will come it, so which which side you observe your tail i am trying to make it more accurate which side here you observe tail tailness where you observe longer tail right side right side you observe so it is what uh, uh, right side is skewed a skewed it is a skewed version like here a uh, same thing point 3 if you are taking point 3 this one is also right uh, here uh, this one is better plot joint the point now nah, tail might be clear to you it is right skewed right skewed okay so those things i will explain you later simply you can say that so this one is the point where you observe the maximum probability where you observe maximum probability okay this is the point where you observe maximum probability so uh, third one is geometric random variable okay what uh, when you are getting geometric random variable you are tossing a coin and you are looking for first success so here number of trial bernoulli trials is first success we will call it a geometric random variable and the distribution is a geometric distribution the probability distribution would be a geometric distribution uh, why it is geometric it will having it will have a geometric sequence pattern so a random variable x having outcome like that when you are when you will get uh, first success when you are tossing a coin uh, performing a bernoulli trial when you will get first success can you say that you will get first success in first toss or second toss or third toss you 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 are not certain so you have to perform how many trial you have to perform you may go up to infinite not in and, and you are going in binomial so infinite you may go up to infinite a long number of trials you have to perform okay bernoulli trial you have to perform so that's way a outcome will look like here uh, cross product of ht how many times infinite times so infinity is written here what does it mean uh, in the last case i had written uh, h set h comma t to the power n that means ht has uh, we have taken cross product of ht n times then n tuple outcomes are n tuple collection of all tuple in sort we denote it by uh, h comma t to the power n collection of uh, infinite tuple will denote it by h comma t to the power infinity infinite tuple is coming here so here if you talk about uh, x is bernoulli trial till first success then it will have a geometric random variable with parameter p which is between 0 and 1 and what is that here probability that x is observing will be small x it is defined as p that x is observing will be small x it is saying that uh, p is observing will be small x that means at the x trial we are observing success first success that means before x trial in the x minus 1 trial we have observed failure what is the probability of one failure 1 minus p what is the probability of x minus 1 failure 1 minus p to the power x minus 1 that x minus 1 failure we have observed now so probability of failure would be uh, x minus 1 failure would be 1 minus p to the power x minus 1 and at the x trial we are observing success what is the probability of success p so that's way what is the value of probability that x is observing will be a small x 1 minus p to the power x minus 1 into p and what are the possible value of x can you can you say that x will take zero value that means zero trial what is meaning of zero trial so, so x will take value 1 2 3 4 5 like tell me what kind of form it is taking how does it look like like in term of sequence whether it is a arithmetic sequence or geometric sequence or harmonic sequence what kind of sequence this one it is a geometric sequence 
r to the power n kind of thing in place of m here we are taking x okay so r to the power x minus 1 so it is a geometric instance that's why this distribution this probability distribution we call it a geometric distribution and the corresponding random variable we call it geometric random variable and it is having a parameter p p is the probability of success okay so x is what it is counting it is number of bernoulli trial till the first success that one is always a geometric random variable and having a geometric distribution and again you can take a graph of geometric random variable it is coming like this way like uh, it is you can see it is it is coming like this uh, you might have already seen ball kind of thing take a ball tennis ball and throw it up it will fall a little uh, so how falling is happening if you measure the height after each uh, jump what would be what would be the height what kind of form height will have hmm? have you observed that in physics someone might have explained it is geometric kind of thing first h then h by 2 then h by 4 or something like that you will observe like that that kind of phenomenon you can observe so that one is again coming a geometric so your probability is falling it is having like that so it is again a geometric random variable so that you can plot and the second plot it is talking about cumulative distribution function that i will discuss it later okay and now we can generalize geometric random variable to pascal pascal distribution what is pascal distribution it is just talking about number of trial till kth success number of trial till kth success or x success x you are taking variable thing here you denoted by x now random variable you did so a small x a small x success so that is the pascal random variable pascal is just generalized from geometric so a random variable x again you are taking uh, the outcome is having infinite sequence of head and tail you can say it like that so here you are counting uh, x is bernoulli trial till kth success or x success you can call it x success better x word we have taken it here i am trying to make it uniform x success in pronunciation it, is, it doesn't look good kth success looks fine so that's why kth uh, okay kth success okay kth uh, case success means getting head head is getting head is the success so what is the probability mass function at x that means we are talking about uh, probability that x is observing value small x and the if you simplify what is the uh, probability mass function at x it is coming like in this form does it look like uh, binomial is it binomial is it by anyone anyone can see any similarity with this and binomial distribution is it like that again 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 see again see the case your case success is here fixed actually case it is fine so again see here what are you i am writing binomial distribution anyone have observed binomial distribution difference between these two if you talk about binomial distribution what was that binomial dis distribution having parameter n n c okay. any difference till now anyone has seen and choose k p to the power k in place of x we have taken k in place of uh, keep x don't call it keep here x now just see the difference i am asking to see you what is the difference 1 minus p to the power n minus
I am not using mouse, I am not using pad, just laptop that uh, it is very difficult to maintain the writing pad. So here this one is the binomial uh, distribution. What is the difference between these two? Just see, I have I put two person before you, I am asking to see the difference between those two person. How does it look like? Here, P to the P to the power I am saying that what what is the difference between this and this? The difference, I am not, not subtract. How does uh, these are differing in representation? In look. Here p to the power k, 1 minus p to the power x minus k. If p to the power x, 1 minus p to the power n minus x. x equal to k minus 1. Then we replace k minus 1 as x. That, no, first see here. First see here, later see here. Okay, first see here and later see here. So there is a difference in everywhere you observe. Everywhere difference. What difference you observe in the Pascal distribution? Here actually uh, in binomial, n is fixed, x is varied. Okay. Here x is very and here this one is very. Here this one is very. Uh, do you see difference? Here x minus here we observe x here. So this one is variable thing. Here this one is variable thing. Another power will come uh, that one is fine. But main difference you will see here this one the second one is varying, varying here in the first one is very. And that one is talking trial number of trial here number of trial is varying here number of success is varying here number of success in pascal is fixed number of success in binomial varying number of trial in pascal varying number of trial in binomial fixed so that kind of things you observe okay is it clear to everyone question is coming that how you will compute this uh, pascal distribution so it is very easy to compute. So definitely Pascal distribution it is talking about uh, number of Bernoulli trial till kth success. Okay. And how you will compute it? In a very simple way you can compute it like that. Uh, actually you can divide the event into part to find the probability that x is your observing value. Uh, small x is equivalent to find the pro joint probability of k minus v. That means you are talking about you are observing probability that f uh, x is observing a small x. That means at the x number of trial, you are observing k success. At the x number of trial, a small x number of trial, you are observing k success. That is the computation of probability. So you can divide into two parts. That means in x minus one trial, you are talking about in x trial, you are getting k success. K success. K success you are getting in x trial. This probability, computation of the probability, it is saying that in the x trial, you are getting k success. What does it mean? That means in x minus 1 trial you have already got k minus 1 success. So that's why it is joint probability that in uh, you have already uh, got k minus 1 success in the first x minus 1 trial. And in the x trial you are getting 1 success. What is the probability of 1 success? P. What is the probability of uh, k minus 1 success in x minus 1 trial? It is directly coming from binomial distribution. It is, it is reading it k minus 1 success out of x minus 1 trial. x minus 1 trial. So that you will get it from binomial distribution and in the x trial you are getting 1 success. What is the probability of 1 success? P. It is a joint probability. It is, you have converted. If you simplify, it is taking the form of this. This we call it Pascal distribution. This is the Pascal distribution what we call it. And uh, it is satisfying all the properties. And there is another hypergeometric. So do we have time? I think we have already crossed the time.
So in next class we will discuss a few more uh, special uh, random variable and 